in the last video I did, which by the way, you guys really enjoyed. I loved all the feedback. A lot of you said you wanted to see some monsters that I wouldn't be able to guess straight away. The feedback from my team is that most monsters are too easy to guess, but they worked hard to make sure that there's at least a couple in the mix today that I may not know. And before we get started, I have a huge update for anyone who's gotten the Pro Sketch Pack. They are in stock with Spectral Noir in the UK. They have arrived and they are shipping out now. Now the Pro Sketch Pack, for those of you who don't know, is over $200 worth of Pro Art Supplies for only $99. So we've also enabled a Flexi Pay option to people who want to get the pack and don't want to miss out. So you can pay in a few parts rather than all at once. More about the Sketch Pack itself later in the video, but let's jump into our first monster. Monster description one, taller than a person has two short horns like an ox's horns, tiger skin loincloth, blue or red skin and hairy. All right, I, th <laughs> I think we got one. I don't know what it is. Big mouth with tusk-like canine teeth, three fingers on each hand, long sharp nails on toes. Optional, three eyes or just one eye. How is that optional? <laughs> Well, I gotta hand it to the team. I haven't got a fucking clue. <laughs> With the starting reference that this character is taller than a person and took a few of the things that would be fairly obvious additions to the silhouette, such as short horns, a loincloth, three fingers on each hand, and just a generally monstrous silhouette to put next to it to roughly get my brain moving around. There's very little about what sort of body type. Instead, it focuses on details. I started off with really rough scribbly thumbnail sketches of some different bodies to try and find what feels right. The weird thing is when I try going wider or more monstrous, it ends up feeling like these would be details that would be specified. Like if he's too broad in my sketch, why wouldn't the description call them a really broad or wide monster? Which means in my monster designs, I need to anchor more to something a little more in the middle of the the road so that the things that really stand out are what are pointed out. I was a bit torn between whether to go really bestial like I have here or in my next little scribble sketch something a little more human-esque. But at the end of the day the fact that he's wearing a tiger skin loincloth to me leans more towards human elements than a monster. So I had to take a leap and move on to a refined sketch. See, what I really felt like after all my exploration is that all of the things that were described are kind of like what someone would describe if they were in a tavern and they were telling the tall tale of the creature that they came across alone in the forest. No, 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 believe me, it was absolutely terrifying. He was taller than a person and he had two short horns like an ox's horns. If I remember correctly, he was wearing a tiger skin loincloth and his skin was blue or red and hairy. Oh, you should have seen his mouth. It was big, three fingers on each hand, long and sharp nails on his toes. And he had three glaring eyes staring down at me. Or was it one? I don't remember, I've had a few too many drinks. I gotta guess before I reveal. I want you to guess too though. I'm gonna guess this is something maybe from the Witcher series. Reveal time, you ready? Oni, oh, what? Interesting. Wow, okay, well just imagine that's like a, a, a field worker from Japan going out at nighttime and just replace those like pine trees with cherry blossoms, I don't know. But I feel like that works. I feel like that works really well as like a, a realistic interpretation of what an Oni demon might look like. I, I'm really happy with that. Now we move on to monster description number two, which is divided into two. On the left, we have 
white face with big red painted lips, bald with tufts of orange hair on either side of head, baggy silver silk suit with giant orange buttons, bright blue tie and big white cartoon style gloves, oversized orange shoes, teeth like a lion in the zoo. Or bandages flapping from neck and wrists, lined face like parchment, split open forehead, teeth leaning in mouth, no eyes, but something glittering in dark eye sockets. Is this the one, I have to check, is this the one monster? All right, we've just confirmed. This is one monster design with two designs. I think, Let's see if we can figure this out. As you can see, I'm literally just putting down all of the specific details of both prompts. The one on the left is clearly a clown. The only thing that isn't super clowny is the lion teeth element. Otherwise it's all just sort of clown details. Then on the right is my depiction of some of the spookier details of this other version, maybe a transformation of this character. Cause it is the one monster. Bandages flapping from the neck, lined face like parchment, split open on the forehead. Now I initially started to interpret that as like the, the forehead opening up as if it had a mouth or something. But with a face lined like parchment, I guess that tells me it's really dry, really tight. And with the depiction of no eyes, but something glittering in dark eye sockets, I'm getting this really gaunt picture of a face in my head. So that's how I've interpreted the split open forehead. And while I could be influenced from some of the depictions of who I think this is, I tried really hard to just stick to the prompts. And when it came to the outfit, the specification of a baggy silver silk suit was something I really wanted to lean into. In fact, I Googled clown suits and you can see there's a sort of onesie almost type suit, which which looks like a big parachute outfit almost, like really puffy around the sleeves and all the way around to the upper thighs, but it's all one big weird puffy piece. I thought that worked really well and would contrast nicely with the really lanky aesthetic I was sort of developing, especially with this gaunt, creepy aesthetic happening. And for my final piece, rather than dealing with one or the other prompt, I didn't think there was anything contradicting combining them. I could have all of the features of the prompt on the left with the white face, big red lip, orange hair, silver suit, blah, 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 with the creepy stuff in the second half. Something tells me it's playtime. Final details coming together. This has turned out to be a really creepy piece and I absolutely love the result. Reveal time, you ready? Say it with me, Pennywise, right? Pre pretty obvious. I bet you I'm right, but I'm curious how similar mine looks. It's Pennywise. Ah, oh, gee, wow. Stephen King's It. I mean, it's, it's fascinating, but this is my interpretation, as rigid as possible, sticking to the description of the book and trying not to be influenced by later depictions. I think it looks pretty cool. Now, obviously you've seen me use all the sketchbooks and materials in this video and the previous monsters from description. I wanna share just a little bit about the Pro Sketch Pack. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been obsessed with not only drawing and art, but with carrying those things around with me so I can do it all the time. The Pro Sketch Pack has been designed from someone who loves art and creating high quality art for people who want to love the process. So that the journey of becoming a better artist is as satisfying as when you finally make the piece that you're so proud of. So don't miss out, go to prosketchpack.com. You can get it for $99 for a limited time and you can even break it down into smaller payments. And even better than that, they're all finally in stock as of now. Go to prosketchpack.com and join me in some sketching. In fact, let's continue sketching monster number three. Like a man, but taller, covered in long, dark, hair with red eyes, long arms that nearly touch the ground, huge talons at the end of arms, giant feet that are on backwards, ape-like. I don't know this one. I think they've done a really good job prepping this. Maybe it'll become clear when I start drawing it, but that is a wild description. Let's see where we go. All right, just like in some of my other prompts, I start off with some of the most basic foundation elements I can anchor to. This monster is like a man, but taller, so I drew a man. But later in the prompt, it says ape-like, so I also drew the silhouette of an ape. And using those as my foundation, started to rough a bit of a blocking of a pose and combine some of the other elements. There's only two really unique prompts that I can anchor to to make it really interesting. The first being huge talons at the end of arms, and the second being giant feet that are on 
backwards. To try and figure out what backwards feet looked like, I drew legs all the way down to the feet and just turned the foot around and it just looks wrong. So I thought he's got talons happening. Maybe his feet are talon-esque and it sort of looks like the, the rear of the talon is the front with these large claws behind. Other than that, I needed to figure out what to do with the face. Using an ape as a foundation, I mucked around with a few ideas involving bird features, but at the end of the day, I came back to a semi-ape, semi-human and semi-monster mishmash and moved across to a final illustration, starting out with the blocking and slowly filling out the details. When it came to inking this thing, the brush pen is an absolute dream. As you can see, this is a pen that is capable of fine detail, but also you can fill large areas really, really quickly. And it's super nice to use. It's time to just add a touch of detail with my white marker just to make sure some of the darker areas of hair that are overlapping still have some definition, which nicely frames and polishes off my third monster. I don't know with this one. I don't know. I'm still, I still gotta guess. Weirdly, like the only thing that comes to mind if I had to pick a book would be where the wild things are, which doesn't describe any of that stuff. But let's find out what it's from. Oh, Yowie! Australia's Bigfoot of Aboriginal folklore. Do you know I don't mind my Yowie? I think that's pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. I have one last prompt to do. Hopefully I knock it out of the park, but I'm, I'm quite happy with the three or four I've got so far. Monster number four. A 14 year old girl. Okay, that started different. Not like a 14 year old girl either, it just is a 14 year old girl. Six feet tall, shaped like a barrel of beer. What? Mouth stretching ear to ear with very sharp teeth, four very long fangs and top row two on each side. Paws hanging to the ground with bloodied claws like cats, but straighter red eyes and a mop of red hair in a medieval fantasy setting. I have no idea. <sighs> Any guesses? Let's see what happens. Now this one feels to me like a wild card. When I did the original characters from descriptions videos on this channel, the last one was always a little bit wacky. But I wanted to approach this the way I did with all of my other creations. Starting with the core elements, the foundation pieces of the prompts, slap down on the page for me to follow. So we have a 14 year old girl, we have a barrel, we have a wide stretched mouth with the two sharp fangs on either side from the top of her mouth, paws that are bloodied, uh, and uh, red eyes and a mop of red hair. I have no idea what the hell is going on here. <laughs> and any attempt to combine them into something reasonable understandable. Let's just say it'll be a monstrosity whatever direction I go in. <laughs> and I think I just have to pick a direction. So let's leap into a final piece and try and be brave and hope we end up near a result that works. And I think to really make it work, the best thing I could possibly do is draw a six foot tall medieval fantasy styled gentleman looking confusedly to his side, which is where I'm going to draw this weird monster. That way, no matter what I draw, it's going to make sense and look purposeful because his is confused as we are. <laughs> and that's the other thing. This is medieval fantasy. Like how the hell does this make any sense? I'm lost. Anyway, let's just give it a crack and slap all these things together. <laughs> With all those elements combined, my God, I, I don't know. I'm deeply sorry for this. I, I don't know. This is the one I'm most confused by and I'm most interested to see what it is. And if you guessed it, I will be very impressed. The reveal is, what? 
Striga from The Witcher. They don't look like 14 year old girls. They're the depictions of this monster in The Witcher. Look at that, that's more like the, the ape talon monster thing that I drew before. And I guessed that that was from The Witcher. I swear to God, you can literally swap them. I could just give you that, my Oni, and be like, hey look, it's a 14 year old girl from The Witcher. Let me know if your Witcher universe benefits from my striker. Striker, I don't know. I'm very curious if you've guessed. By the way, I'm loving this, and my team is loving prepping this too, so I would love your help to prep some more, because with everyone's help combined, we could come up with some really cool ideas. If you have suggestions for some characters from different books that are depicted in movies or television, make sure to write them out in the comments, and you can collaborate with my team to join in future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button, and until next time, I'll see you later. It's a 14 year old girl. That's a 14 year old girl, not that. I have no idea what, um, what's happening anymore. <laughs>